Good morning, St. Michael's. My name is Erin Jeanette, and I'll be serving as the online chaplain this morning. I'll be with you in the chat, both on Zoom and on Facebook. A warm welcome to any of you who are worshiping with us for the first time today or visiting, either online or in person. We're eager to greet you and learn more about you, so stay tuned. We'll say more about getting connected to St. Michael's a little later in the service. If you are joining us from home and would like to participate symbolically in the sacred meal of the Holy Eucharist later in the service, go ahead and find something simple to eat and drink, and when it's time for communion, you can join along with those who are present in the sanctuary. It's a blessing to be gathered together in this hybrid, in-person, online St. Michael's space. Take a breath right now and allow yourself to rest here in God's presence. Come, let us worship together. Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, St. Michael's. My name is Gregory Bryant. Our first reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel and Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that were done under the sun and see all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish. Yet they will be masters of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain and their work is a vexation. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord.
St. Michael's. My name is Genevieve Culver. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or a betrayer over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, what should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Saul, You have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat and drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. So apparently, the world's first trillionaire is trying to conquer both sky and sea. 
Reports are that Jeff Bezos is building himself the world's largest sailing yacht. Some of you may have seen this story in the Times this week. This definitely is a story I returned to a couple of times. It was interesting to read. So this yacht is being built um, in the waterfront city of Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And the plan is to build it and then sail it out the channel into the open sea. But all of the money in the world does not pay for critical advanced planning. And it turns out that there is a landmark bridge, it's called the Hef, and uh, the yacht won't fit under it uh, on its way out of the port. I got a good laugh out of this. I definitely read this article more than once. So Bezos' company, right, is asking the city if they could, you know, we'll assume the cost of this. Can we just pay to have this bridge dismantled for a couple of days? And then reassemble it. We'll take care. We'll reassemble it, too, just so this, this yacht can leave the station. Now, the HEF is a vertical lift bridge which, by the way, if you're kind of nerdy like me, like I totally went down a Google rabbit hole and read all about vertical lift bridges. <laughs> Fun to do while you're writing a sermon. And uh, it was decommissioned in the 1990s. So the HEF stands as a landmark and nothing more. And the cost of dismantling and reassembling the HEF, this unused bridge, would have been fully incurred by Jeff himself would have taken at most a few days. It was a request that had minimal disruption and zero impact on the city and its budget. But, and this is where it gets really good, when the locals got wind of it, I'm still laughing about this. <laughs> Sometimes I cry during sermons. I've never like laughed myself through a sermon, but like literally they said that the locals moved to Oregon <laughs> organize a mass protest to gather and throw eggs at the yacht as it, <laughs> as it went by. I'm sorry, it's kind of funny <laughs> to have a massive egg throwing event at this yacht as it went past them in this channel on the way out to the open sea, except for one gentleman who was a vegan and going to throw a tomato. Y'all, yeah, this was good reading this week. I commend it to you. Look it up in the New York Times. So they were enraged at the mentality of a person who believed that money could buy him anything he wanted. And worse, that he hadn't thought through, thought through the plan of getting the yacht out of the warehouse. So to paraphrase a phrase that I've liked to say myself, poor planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. Poor planning on your part, Jeff, does not constitute a busted bridge on our part. The rich man with wisdom considers things that the rich fool does not. Bezos, the rich fool, had not anticipated any obstacles because he could not imagine an obstacle if money was not an issue. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Jesus, too, has a cautionary tale about a rich fool. It's important that the rich man is not a fool because he is wealthy or ambitious. He is a fool because he lives only for himself. He is a lone miser with his abundant possessions and false sense of security. As I'm, I read the story, I always imagine the uh, cartoon Ebenezer Scrooge from the Christmas movies of my youth where it's this cartoon Donald Duck who's just gathering gold coins to himself and kind of hugging them hunched over his desk, right? He gives finite things infinite value. Now, interestingly, the word fool only occurs in one other place in Luke's gospel, and that is when Jesus references the Pharisees and their foolishness and the nature of their foolishness is greed. It's the neglect of justice and the neglect of the love of God. We are foolish not when we have wealth or status, but when our greed turns those things into the highest value. 
And it's worth noting that the rich man, when the rich man talks in this parable, he only talks to himself. The only person he refers to is himself. What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. There I will store all of my grains and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, drink, eat, and be merry. The rich man's land has produced abundantly, and yet he expresses no sense of gratitude to God or to the workers who have helped him plant and harvest this bumper crop. He has more grain and goods than he will ever hope to use. And yet he seems to have no thought of sharing it with others, no thought of what God might require of him. Any possibility of a family or other community connection is glaringly missing. He's blind to the fact that his life is not his own to secure, that his life belongs to God and God can demand it back at any time, as God does in this parable. He believes that everything he has will give him some sort of security, but in the end, that very night, it all proves inadequate. Many forces around us cause us, too, to be tempted to think that storing up something, some sort of abundant possession, will make us secure, not just physical possessions, not just money. We work to possess intangible things, too. Legacy, reputation, work or research that outlives us. It's not just gold and silver. It's also blue ribbons and awards. But deep down, we know that no amount of wealth or property can secure our lives. No amount of money can protect us from cancer or a car accident or bed bugs or flooding. I may speak from experience. Any good New Yorker can probably at this point. No amount of wealth can keep our relationships healthy our families from falling apart. In fact, as we know, often wealth can be the thing that drives families apart, as happens in the parable Jesus tells. Most importantly, no amount of wealth can secure our lives with God. We cannot earn God's favor by having more stuff. In fact, Jesus repeatedly warns that wealth can get in the way of our relationship with God. Our stuff can get in the way of our relationship with God. Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And it's not that God doesn't want us to save for retirement, be able to provide for our future needs. That's important, friends. Please hear that. And it's not that God doesn't want us to eat, drink, and be merry. Lord knows Jesus did lots of that throughout his earthly life. But what we know from the Gospels is that Jesus is clear, being clear here about where our true security really lies. This is about priorities and who and what is truly God in our lives. And if you're, aren't, if you're not sure, if you're wondering if you've got your God priorities straight, well, Paul gives us a handy checklist in today's epistle to the Colossians of things that might indicate that we're on the wrong path, worshiping the wrong things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive language from your mouth, please pay attention, Washington, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and here is the kicker, greed, which is idolatry. Greed is idolatry. It is the belief that our stuff will save us. And it is the delusion that anything we have is ours alone. And it leads to the devastating belief that there is somehow a difference and a divide between me and you. These differentiations 
that we draw throughout human history, Jew and Greek, slave and master, circumcised and uncircumcised, male and female, Democrat and Republican, straight or gay, rich or poor, these are all constructs of our culture and our humanity, our limitations. The truth is nothing I have is mine, nothing you have is yours, all of it is God's. All of it comes from God and belongs to God. It turns out that the rich fool with his yacht in the Netherlands hadn't anticipated any obstacles because of his idolatry. He was foolish enough to believe that money was the only God that people worshipped and the only factor that mattered in the equation. What he neglected to consider was something of even more value, and that was community. The folks in Rotterdam weren't angry about a rich person building themselves a yacht. There are plenty of billionaires in the Netherlands who have nice things. They were angry because of his arrogance in building something so ostentatious simply because he could and his ignorance in wanting to dismantle a beloved city landmark just so he could have it. One, by the way, with immense deep meaning to the Dutch. What Bezos and his company didn't care to know is that the Hef is one of the only things in Rotterdam that survived the Nazi bombings of World War II. In World War II, pretty much the rest of the city was completely destroyed. And the Hef was the first bridge of its kind when it was opened in 1927. It stands as, quote, a symbol of resilience and a rare link to the past. Friends, what idolatry leads us away from is community. The rich fool with greed as his god cannot imagine anything other than material possessions having value. All is vanity. But this isn't just a trillionaire's problem. It's a cautionary tale for all of us. We all have things that we prize that God doesn't give a lick about whether it's status or savings, things that we protect from the outside world, things that keep us ultimately closed off from one another. The rich fool, like Ebenezer Scrooge, gathers his, his stuff, sorry Damon, closer to himself, unaware of how it creates a barrier between himself and the community. It's a posture that can feel safe and protective, but ultimately it keeps you stuck and isolated and eventually kind of hunched over and disfigured. If I can borrow an image from ballet for a moment, you all know that's my other shtick, right? In ballet, this posture is with the arms, the first position arms. Dancers often hold, this was way easier to do with 745 when I could dance around the room, but <laughs> dancers hold their arms in this position when they want to turn. They do pirouettes or chenet turns with arms held here. But first position arms are never meant to be the end point. First position is a transitional position. You always move through to take your arms somewhere else and always into an open place and position. This posture is never meant to be held permanently. It is always meant to be moved through and opened out, outward, because that, friends, that's where the dance begins. Amen. So in response to what we have heard, I invite you to stand up <laughs> and to share together in the words of our faith, the Nicene Creed, the language of our tradition. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning, St. Michael's. My name is Lynette Holder. Please join me in the prayers of the people. During the silences, plead at, please add your own prayers, either aloud in your heart or by typing them into the chat box or comment bar. When I say, God of grace, please respond, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, enliven the church for its mission, that we may be the salt of the earth and light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. Let us pray for the church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Andrew, Alan, and Mary, our bishops, for the committee to elect a bishop, for the parishioners, lay leaders, clergy, and staff of St. Michael's, for our new partner parish, St. Peter's, in Eaton Square, London, and for our friends at St. Luke's Church and School in Martell, Haiti. God of grace, creator of all, lead us into ways of justice and peace that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. Let us pray for the world. God of grace, spirit of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others, that all may act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as Christ loves us. Let us pray for our community.
God of grace, God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. Give comfort to those who mourn and bring them peace in their time of loss. Make us willing agents of your compassion, strengthening us as we share in making people whole. We pray for the Travell family, Dennis, Cherie, Scott, Evelyn. God of grace, God, into your hands we commend those who have died. We pray for Jane Tully, Owen Travell, Jane Woodbridge. May their example inspire and encourage us. God of grace, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our fellow human beings. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My friends, may the peace of Christ be always with you. As we come together around the table, we do this both symbolically and in person, and we bring to the table all that we have and are, symbolized by the gifts of the bread and wine that we share and also by the money that we offer. As you are able, please continue your giving to St. Michael's. If you're here in person, you can do so with the plate in the back. If you're online, you will see information about giving uh, posted in the chat. So now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice for all.
God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By Christ's blood, we are reconciled. By Christ's wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. God, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our forebears, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Holy One, accept these prayers and praises through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. We are bold to pray. As we come to share in this feast of bread and wine, the Lord's table, know that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here and to receive. If you're here in person, please feel welcome to come forward to reach out your hands and to receive the bread. And if you choose the wine, if you're at home, we invite you to pray the prayer of spiritual communion and join us in that way. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Savior. Amen. Can you please be seated for a few announcements? First of all, a welcome. So good to be here with you today and on this beautiful and not quite so terribly hot Sunday to celebrate together in this space and online as well. Um, if you're here in the building and you've been trying to figure out your way into the parish house, you have by now figured out that you can no longer go through the door to the archway uh, on your right. You'll have to go to the back of the church to find your way through to the parish house. Wonderful signage and barriers and things all constructed along the way by um, various people, including our construction crew, to get you where you need to go. But if it's confusing, please don't hesitate to ask any of us, uh, and we'll find it with you. <laughs> it will be changing, and we just kind of ask your patience as we continue on into this construction process. Um, after the service today, we will, in the parish house, through the back doorway to your right, uh, continue with our series that we've had all the way through this uh, month of July, asking questions of discernment on how we are to faithfully live as Christians in America today. And so the concluding time of our series is today. If you haven't been at any of them, you are still welcome to come and to join us for this one as we keep asking questions of God's intentions for us and how we can live that out in our world. So I invite you to come for that. There are refreshments, there is air conditioning, and it is worth your time to stay. Um, also want to offer a thanks from various folks for some new signage that's gone up that Damon created and that Gwen Seely Singer uh, came up with the idea for, trying to highlight and invite ways that you can be engaged in outreach ministries here at St. Michael's. So if you go out onto 99th Street, you'll see a whole line of signs on the fence that invite people into helping and serving and being part of things. One particular, two particular ministries I will commend to you both happen on Friday evenings. One is called Bread Bandits and the other Midnight Marauders. We like alliteration. And both of those have to do with getting food in order to have it for Saturday for us to distribute to our guests at Saturday Kitchen. Both of those require either a car or the ability to get into a cab. We are happy to reimburse you if that is necessary, but we do need folks in the coming weeks to make sure that we get the food and get it to the folks that need it. All of the information about that is in the email that comes out every week, and if you look on the back of your bulletin, you'll find two QR codes that take you, one of them to the place that gives you the information I just told you about, and the other for where you can sign up to receive those emails yourself. We have a vestry member here to tell us what the vestry's been up to. Austin, welcome to the podium. Good morning, St. Michael's. My name is Austin Smith, and I'm a member of the vestry. I have been charged with giving you a very brief update as to uh, the proceedings of our latest meeting, which happened this past Monday. Um, we heard about some of the things that you just heard from Mother Kate, uh, including the ongoing renovations update, uh, but also the uh, ongoing hiring process for a new youth director. Uh, we discussed something you may have heard in the prayers of the people, which is that our partner parish in London has, uh, has changed to St. Peter's Eaton Square on account of uh, the, the rector, Father Jonathan Kester, having moved from his prior parish in West Hempstead. Uh, we discussed the uh, initial stages of the discernment process for uh, selecting and electing new members of the vestry, which will happen uh, uh, not until January, but the preparations for that do take time. Um, we heard a more detailed update on the, uh, the, re the renovations and updates on <clears throat> our efforts to connect the renovation to our important ongoing work and reparations and uh, discussed ways that we could, that we could help our, our general contractors achieve some of our goals. Um, lastly, we heard updates from the investment and audit committees. 
uh, and we're assured, and I assure you all is in order there. Uh, and we uh, discussed the uh, financial results from the first half of the year, which were um, generally in line with expectations, very close to plan, and very close to our uh, last year's results, largely on account of uh, the performance of the corner, um, which if you're not familiar with it, the building immediately to the north of uh, where we are now is, is a, a large part of our, of our financial picture. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can see me after or Beth Ann Day uh, or Mother Kate. Thank you. Let's stand for our final blessing. May the wisdom of God and the love of God and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Holy Trinity, amen. amen. and serve the Lord.